In this third video about nonlinear regression, we'll see how to fit a dose response curve to some data. Dose response curves are used to plot the results from experiments where a known dose of a chemical is plotted on the x axis and some kind of biological response is plotted on the y axis. Suppose that we have stimulated immune cells with some antigen in eight different culture plates. In each plate, we have used a different antigen dose with a tenfold difference. As a marker for how well the immune cells become activated, the interferon gamma concentration has been measured after 48 hours of stimulation. The following concentrations of interferon gamma have been obtained at the different antigen doses. If we plot the data, we see how the response is changing as a function of the dose. We see that, at high doses, the response approaches some maximum response. The following equation is one out of several that can be fitted to dose response data. This function has four parameters. The parameter top represents the maximum response, whereas the bottom represents the minimum response, which in this case can be seen as the interferon gamma concentration if the cells have not been stimulated at all. If you know that unstimulated cells should result in no response, you can fix the value of the bottom to zero, which means that it will not be estimated. This is nice because it is easier to estimate three parameters compared to four parameters. EC50 corresponds to the concentration that results in half the response, or halfway between the top and the bottom. Note that the parameter is here called log 10 EC50. Suppose that the EC50 value in this case is equal to 10 to the power of negative 6. That means that the parameter log 10 EC50 would have been estimated to negative 6. Finally, the hill slope determines the general slope of the curve. Suppose that we fix the bottom to zero in this example. Our initial guess of the top could be set to 42, and log 10 EC50 to negative 6, whereas an appropriate initial guess of the hill slope is usually 1 if the slope is positive. If you like to estimate the parameters in the statistical software tool R, we can plug in the data and make a plot. In this example, we will not estimate the parameter bottom because we are here sure that its value should be equal to zero. We therefore fix this parameter to zero. Then we enter the equation which is here saved in the object called f1. We then run the NLS function with the initial guesses of the three parameters. Note that the parameter bottom should not be included in this list, because we will here not estimate that parameter. The function will result in these estimated parameters. To place the fitted curve in the plot, we can extract the estimated parameters from the output and plug in this into the equation to generate the y data for the curve, so that we can plot the curve. Suppose that we now stimulate the immune cells with the same antigen dose in the different cultures, but where we in this experiment instead add a certain drug at different concentrations that is supposed to inhibit the immune cells. Note that the response is now decreasing with increasing doses. We can use the same equation to fit to this data. Note that we here use the notation IC50, which represents the inhibitory dose that results in the response halfway between the top and the bottom. Since there now is a negative slope, a good initial guess of the hill slope is negative 1. If we fit this function to the data, we'll obtain the following estimated parameters. Note that the hill slope is now negative, which is expected since the curve now has a negative slope. Similar to what we have done in previous videos, we can also compute the p-values and confidence intervals of the estimated parameters with the following code. This was the end of this basic video 
about fitting those response curves. In the next video, we will see how we can fit a logistic growth model to data. Thanks for watching.